Most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine can be
That is what we call research. If it was so glaring that it is not true, nobody in their right mind will accept that. But it is mingled with truth to the point that sometimes even the truth proportion seems to outweigh the error in it. It is like having a glass of water and dropping maybe some two drops of DDT inside. When you look at a glass, it is so clear and the water looks so pure, but you will not take otherwise. But if you saw a cup with water that looked colorful, will you mistake it for water? No. And so when we say deception, it is truth made with error, which appears on the face value as truth. And the purpose is to sway people from the truth or the right path. I found this in the book called Education, page 230, paragraph 4. The writer says, Error rarely appears for what it really is. When you see error, you will hardly detect it. It rarely appears for what it really is. It is by mingling with or attaching itself to truth that it gains acceptance. When error stands alone, it cannot be entertained. But when error mingles with truth, the truth seems to give it a kind of facade that is inviting and attractive. And so when you see error, you will not know it is error until you subject it to what? Biblical scrutiny. Hallelujah. What day? Jesus had left Jerusalem and then he was walking away from the temple with the disciples. And while they were going, the Bible says that the disciples turned and looked at the edifice. They looked at the temple, the way it was looking glorious. They admired the architecture of the temple. They were looking at it, its beauty, its structural makeup, and they were imagining. This is a wonderful building. Then Jesus asked them, Do you see this building you are looking at? Do you see the temple you are looking at? Not one soul will be left here on another. Everything will be destroyed. Ah, what we are admiring is aesthetic beauty. We are admiring a structural capability. You are saying that not even a soul will be left. Everything will come crumbling down. That is strange. What will lead to this destruction? And so they ask him, What you are saying? When will this thing be? Because we all believe this. Jerusalem is the holy city. The temple is the temple of God. Who will destroy it? Is it earthquake? Is it natural disaster? Or what will destroy it? Who will be able to destroy the holy temple of God? And Jesus smiled in with, with him and was telling them, Stop admiring doing things. Many of us are looking at things today and we admire them. But all these things are perishable. The temple was glorious, but it was going to be what? Destroyed. Stop admiring perishable things. Stop admiring doomed things. These things will all be destroyed. For what is seen is temporal, but what is not seen is eternal. So this temple it will be destroyed even very soon. And so at the way they got tired and they tried to take respite on the Mount of Olives. So while Jesus sat on the mountain, the disciples could still imagine what Jesus was. So they came to him and asked him, When will these things be? Tell us. What time? What age? When will these things be? Matthew 24, verse 30. Then the second question is that, And what will be the sign of your coming? And the end of the world. In the myopic mind, they thought that the time the temple will be destroyed, then it means the world will be ended. Because this temple is the temple of God. You know that means the holy city. Who dare destroy it? 
So if the temple will be destroyed, then the end of the world will be at hand. So when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? And then Jesus responded. In responding to their way and their works, Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 4, Take heed that no man deceives you. We are asking you what you are telling us what. We are asking what are the signs. We are talking about what? Deception. Jesus says, don't bother about the way the timing, but take heed. Be careful that no one deceives you. Why? Then he asked him the sign, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive what? Many. While you are thinking about the details, I am saying that beware of deception. Because getting close to the time of the end, there will be many false Christs that will come pretending to be me, and their purpose is what? Deception. Hallelujah. Then he began to give them some of the signs of the times and of the end. And then he reiterated in verse 11, and many false prophets will arise and shall deceive many. You see the highlights are put in there. Take heed that no one deceives you. Because false Christ will come and their purpose is what? To deceive many. False prophets will arise and they will receive what? Many. Then he went ahead and gave them some additional signs. As if it is not enough about the warning, he went again in verse 23 and 24. He said, At that time, if anyone says to look here or look there in the Christ, don't believe it. Don't even go to see it. If you tell that Jesus has appeared at that moment, don't go because. It is all deception. Don't even go to see. One day I was there, and one of my church members called me in a room. Pastor, he said men have appeared in the street lights, and people are there capturing this. So he went to my approval. I said, Don't go there. Pastor, I want to go and see. He went and came and told me, Pastor, I saw Mary. I have you seen Mary before? You saw Mary. Because you went, you will see something. Jesus said, don't even dare and go there because it's what? Lies. Because when the Son of Man appears, he says, it will be as the lightning flash from the east to the west. All eyes will see it. It is not going to be secluded. So when people come telling you Christ is there in China, Christ is there in Dubai, don't believe it and don't go there. Hallelujah. Because they are all deceptions. Then he added in verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders. It's so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. They are going to do so many signs and wonders with holy water and all these kind of enchantments all in the name of Jesus and because of these things they are going to deceive many and if possible even those who have been elected for salvation they will be swept at their feet because they will believe those false miracles. In a summary, Jesus' warning is that be very careful so that you are not deceived by your senses. You see, the human mind is so empirical that you look for what? Evidence. So seeing is believing. So once men have appeared in the street lights, then it is bad. Because I've seen it. But Jesus says, don't even go, because when you go, you will be fooled. You went to that smile and looked at the place and you saw some hair and said, Jesus is hair. What is your name? Because you have seen, you have believed. Blessed is he who has not yet seen 
And what? Please, our faith is not based on sight. Second Corinthians 5 7. For we do not walk by sight, but by what? Faith. And faith in the world. Deception. How will these four prophets and four Christ deceive many people? How will they do that? They will deceive many people to what? Miracles. Miracles. Everywhere Jesus will say. Everywhere Jesus will give you Everywhere. So teach Jesus. And people are running there. And when they go, they hear testimonies. Whether they are genuine or not, only God knows. And even if they are real testimonies, what is their source? That is the question. Son, 
into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Why they would be condemned? Verse 13. For this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Jesus is coming to the condemn sinners, but to save sinners. Hallelujah. Amen. But why will people be condemned? It is because when life was given to them, they rejected it. Why? Their deeds were evil. And so, if they come to the light, their deeds will be exposed. The church is the pillar and foundation of the Bible says in 1 Timothy The church of God is the pillar and the foundation of truth. However, today, there are so many strange teaching and preaching going on in the pulpits. And many people are trooping to these places without stopping to ask which of the places should I enter? Because the same church of God with different and opposing messages. So which one should I enter and receive? If they all work for God, why will they be teaching something different? That is the question to ask. If they all use one word, one Bible, why are the interpretations different? You should ask. So going to church is not enough. You must go to a church that is faithful to solar scripture. Hallelujah. Only the Bible. The Apostle Paul warned young Timothy, a pastor who just came to the ministry, he told him, Young man, if you want to be in the ministry, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season, rebuking, exhorting, and reproving with all long suffering. Why? For a time will come that church members will not endure sound doctrine. Pure truth will be objectionable to them. And what will they do? They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers, for pastors, who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. I remember I was there one day, and the church member called. And while we were talking, she was telling me of her family. She was asking, what should we do? Then she said, that is why I have called you. I said, okay, then can we get some days and fast and pray about it? Then, she asked, I'm going to be now, okay? You have a baby. Let's fast and seek the Lord in prayer. You are asking me, is there no alternative? No other prescription? What prescription do you want? So I told them, if you want any other prescription, you can't get it from me. Go to those who will ask you to buy holy water or buy them gifts out and you will fast away. And then you will be a dear in a way, you know. Oh, but you know, so please, I pray to God that I will give them who I see it. Then you will be happy. That is not from God. You need to seek the Lord in what? In prayer! When you pray and ask God will have listening ears. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus told the disciples, ask for this kind. It comes only through what? Fasting and prayer. And you have your bed. You don't want to fast. And you want to be released. So somebody to take a contract and fast for you. That was a good Amen. 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 If you are serious, I can do it with you. But for you to go and relax so that I will fast and get water for you, and it is. It doesn't make sense. If you don't get serious about your own plight, God can get serious for you. So the 
they are looking for what? Teachers. Who will tell them what they want to hear? I was in the house and I saw a woman. This woman was very fair, but there were so many black spots on the skin. So I was looking at her and I was wondering what kind of disease is that? The question is, the woman I went to be told me that did you see a spot? Yes, I was actually right looking at it. Then he said, this woman has been deceiving a soldier, taking his money and not yielding to him. And the man has taken him to some place. That is why that has come upon her. So I told her, if you can tell her that, she should go and apologize to the man. Reconcile with the man and ask forgiveness. She come, we will pray for her and she will be fine. Later I went back and the woman told me that when she was there, she cannot go back to the man. Jesus said, if you are not pray and you remember that you have not anything against somebody, go back, reconcile, and come back and pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Put me in your side. This can be free. Hallelujah. Amen. Then later another person came, another man of God came and then he said, bring me a sow. Eh? You know a sow? <laughs> bring me two good sticks and salt and I'll tie the disease for you. And she quickly provided. I you see that this is more convenient. She would embarrass herself to go and apologize to the man she had offended. But she can submit salt as our and broomsticks. Are we all right? <laughs> Lord have mercy on us. Amen. Then verse 4. He says, They will reject the truth and chase after fables. This. When you speak plain words, it is not comfortable and convenient. They will go for what? Sophistries and accept that they are happy. Throughout the whole scriptures that we have been reading now, you will discover that those who will be deceived are those who will reject truth when it comes to them. Simple. Because the devil's purpose is to deceive. And sometimes, by your background, you are already in the hands of the devil. If you were born in a British school, you will go and be a British. If you were born in a Christian school, even if you will be a Christian, you will be a Gentile. So, by default, sometimes you are somewhere you don't choose to be. So, God knows that many people are in places they have not thought about why they are there because of what? Maybe the association to your parents. And so God wanted to save you when you bring truth to you. But when the truth is presented to you, you have a choice. Either to accept the truth and be saved, or to reject the truth and perish. So the condemnation is not your ignorance, but your rejection of truth when it comes. Look at uh, Acts 17. But instead, Jesus said that, and Paul said, in the time of ignorance, God waits at your, your six. Because you did not know. But now that I have told you all the truth, he desires what? Repentance. For he has set a day that he will bring all things into judgment by the man Jesus Christ. But you know something. The greatest irony is that. These false guides and false prophets or false teachers, sometimes they themselves are even deceived. There are some who know what they are doing is not right. They are looking for money. So when we don't need any business, they are kind of open. But there are others too who are genuinely, sincerely doing what they are doing, thinking that they are serving God. Yet they are not deceived. And that is more dangerous. Second Timothy 3 verse 13. He says, Evil men and false teachers will grow west and west, deceiving and being deceived. You are deceiving others. And in yourself, you are being deceived. <laughs> you know what 
the old dealers. The devil was fooling him. He thought that he was going to swindle the teachers or the scribes and the high priests. How much will you give me? And I will what? Betray him to you. But you know, this man, he can actually vanish. So, when I show him that he is a man, hold him fast. Or give him one and come in. The devil made to believe that as he attempted arresting Christ and he escaped. This time too, he can betray him and he will escape and we are watching the money and talk. So he told them, when I show you this man, oh, he meet him. Then when he showed them the man, the man did not escape this time. He humbled himself and he changed it and took him away. Now when he was now trying to reflect, how am I going to accept all this blame? He now realized that he was deceived. Because the time we decided, the conviction was that Jesus will escape. So he will not be killed, but you are putting your money, free money. But now he must have no. It is not so. He is actually submitted to their torture. He's going to be killed, and everybody will say, He does it, he does it, he does it. So I can't stand this again. And so let me go and end my life. Because, friend, let me go here. He was deceived, but at the time he was doing the transaction, he was trying to deceive them. But he himself was deceived. Many false prophets are deceived themselves. Why? Because they are working with the name of Jesus. And sometimes their adherents are giving testimonies. They begin to feel that these people's testimony are the new and therefore God embraces them. And so they are thinking that I don't have a GNG, it's a genetic muscle, but before they are dancing, and they are Yesu, or G, Yesu, you understand? Then tell the way they think, and they are all thinking like that. Sometimes when you are sitting, the first step you get resistance to me, you struggle to do it. We do the first one, nobody saw you, nobody caught you, and you are free. The second one, then you begin to enjoy the same thing that when you run there, when they get to a strike, you are striking your there, and then money goes. Self-deception. Because you are doing it, then your conscience accepted, nobody is seeing you, God is not talking, he's looking at you, and so God is okay with it. Self-deception. And so, Jesus warned against self-deception. Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23. He said, Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father in heaven. It is not the professors, but it is what? Those who live what they profess. Verse 32. Many will say unto me that day, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? For prophets. Did we not drive out demons in your name? And perform many miracles in your name? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Not that I don't remember you. I never. There was no association with me. Not at all. I never was. knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness. And today people are teaching lawlessness. Let's read it. They were what? Prophesied in the name of Jesus. They were casting out demons in the name of Jesus. They were doing miracles in the name of Jesus. And Jesus said, I never knew you. You who what? Practice lawlessness. You who practice iniquity. I don't know you. Why are they trying to be the case? They talked. They were the disciples. And he 
days, you were never stressed. What happened? They were self deceived. They claimed to have prophesied in his name, but they descended. They were just employees of the church and not servants of the Lord. They claimed they cast out demons, but how strong are they that the Spirit of God went through them? The devil can go to faith. You remember Egypt? When Moses wrote, turned into a serpent, the magicians do what? Turn their God into what? A serpent. He mimics God. Whatever God does, He does what? A counterfeit. Counterfeits are counterfeits because they are so close to the Lord, to the Jedi, that it would take technical eye to detect it. In this hand, you take what? Spiritual mind to discern it. You know, the name of Jesus is a powerful name. Hallelujah. Oh, so even if you mention it casually and the Lord decides to glorify himself, something can happen. And so when you mention it, because at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. So you can use the name carefully and yet God may glorify himself. And you may assume that you are a servant of God. So we need all this in your name. Why I say you don't know? I said, I never knew you. There was no relationship between us. I don't know you. Go back to your father, the devil. In the Lord of mercy, amen. amen. If your religiosity does not result in a renewal of mind and a transformation of character, then your spirituality is superficial. If you are going to church, if you are praying, if you are singing, if you are talk speaking, if you are blacking healing, that does not result in a renewed mind, in a transformed heart. All you are doing is what? Waste of time. It is such people that Jesus says to them in Matthew 50 verse 8, those these people draw near me with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Why? They profess godliness, but they don't have the transforming power. And so their lives are the same. When we were on campus at the university, my friend had a movement who was one of uh, a brilliant group leader. And sometimes some of these young ladies who have suffered broken hearts will come to the spiritual path for prayer and counseling. And he will end up talking to these girls. <laughs> I'm not lying, I'm telling you the truth. So one day my friend asked me, I don't understand what you are doing. People are coming with broken hearts. And you will end up chopping up. <laughs> and you know the response of this spiritual power. <laughs> Until now, the young ladies, God's children, have become chicken. And she is the son of God who must enjoy the fruits of his labor. Can you imagine? And this young person, when they get to the podium, they begin to rattle dogs. Come from where? With this attitude. Are you sure that you have a spirit of God? No, it can be. If all you do does not result in transformation, all your religion is what? Useless. Self deception. The scriptures were not given to merely produce theologians. It was given so that. The man of God, the servant of God, will be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Second Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. The Bible is not given for us to be speaking our minds. 
Oh, it's about school and it's just your stuff. So you check my baby. Check my baby, sir. Put me in jail, man. You're going to say that. False teachers ignore God's will while pretending to be seriously working for God. They won't do what God says, but they will do it change the name of God. God doesn't accept that kind of Christianity. Indeed, very simple. We're saying that we did this, we did that, we did that in your name. Jesus says, miracles are not enough proof of the power of God because they are the tools in the hands of the receiver. God works miracles. When you read the book of Acts, you will see a lot of them. But because God works miracles, the devil is only one counterfeiting and imitating them. And his home is so marked to every and everywhere that it becomes difficult to now decide to know which is right, which is wrong. And once you just see a nice church with a nice level with international or Holy Spirit, then God is there. Who said it? The devil, for him, <laughs> he is deceitful. You know, he meant Eve as a serpent. If you are born as Satan, you take Eve to have a to him. He went like a snake. And I wonder why Eve, see the snake talking and you're not afraid. Ah. And you are there responding. <laughs> you are this. Your ears will come with you. As much as we should not be unbelieving, we should not also attribute every supernatural happening to God. No. Instead, the Bible says, through all things. Hold fast. That which is what? Good. First Thessalonians 5 and 1. Now, Revelation 12. I want to challenge you. Spend time reading the book of Revelation. It is a powerful book. And verse 3 of Revelation 1 says, Blessed are they that hear, read, and do the things in this book. God has wonderful revelations for you. That is the gospel when Christ ascended to heaven. So it is a gospel for our time. Don't close it and say that when I hear, I don't understand. God will teach you. Amen. 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 Alex can tell you. Revelation 12, verse 9 says, The great trouble was cast out. That old serpent, that bad Eve, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan. He deceived the whole world. That is all he does. He's what? Deceiving the whole world. The whole world means almost everybody. Including Christians, so called. He's deceiving the whole world. And so the Apostle Paul was afraid when he established a young church. But I fear. Let somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity of the gospel. For if he who can preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, don't listen to them. Why? These people are false apostles. They are deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But no wonder. Even Satan disguised himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants always pretend to be servants of righteousness. They wear the most beautiful coats. They have the most powerful voices. And when they turn that, you will tremble. It's a man of God. Don't be fooled by that. In the end, they will be exposed. Amen. 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 Like an angel. So the Lord thought that he had a jelly what? Prestation. 
So he was now listening to hear what the father had said to him. Then he said, if you are the son of God, he said, no, you cannot come from heaven. And then when you come from heaven, you know who I am. If you are the son of God, prove it by commanding this soul into a bread. It is written, man shall not live by the dead and the And so you go back, okay, let's go. It is written, if you throw yourself from this axe, the angels will bear you in their hand and not touch your feet against the rock. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. You see, when he saw that the Lord stood on the written word, he also stood on what? The written word and he stood on the sword. So he was coming as an angel of life, quoting scripture. The Libra is worthy of his wages. I you see this? And so, whatever means they will use to extract money from you, you will get back to the The Libra is worthy of his wages. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And then the four persons will keep giving to him. And then he will now be leaving the world riches. And the congregation will still be suffering. Praying for miracles. He has to be for He gets the miracle from you. And you are praying for miracles from above. He has one of Hallelujah. Amen. Satan is constantly trying to attract attention to man in the place of God. He takes the people to look to bishops, to pastors, and professors of theology as their guide instead of studying the Bible for their duty themselves. They will rather go and ask the man of God, what do I do? What does the Bible say in this situation? Instead of taking the Bible and asking God, what are you saying? So, if you always go to ask for counsel from the man of God, and the devil is able to capture him, Whatever he says, do it. I call it. Hello? So he is trying to let people's mind be on men instead of being on God. Then if he succeeds in doing that, he will control the minds of these leaders and they will influence all the people who come to them according to his will. I will have a lot of faith with somebody. And as we were opening page by page, the scriptural evidence was on the man. Then he said, let me go and ask the man of God. Which man of God? It's like what he or she was hearing was too straight. Let me go and confirm. Confirm from his or her man of God. Why God have already spoken? What confirmation I gave to it? And when he went, man of God was able to explain it well. And then he believes. He watched the man of God explains and ignored what the word of God said. Therefore, many will be deceived because they will state the Bible for themselves. People are made to believe that the Bible is too difficult. You can't understand it. Unless you have a spiritual mind. Everybody can read a spiritual mind. Hallelujah. Amen. As the students, not Amsterdam students, but the students of the world, sacrifice the power of reason and becomes incapable of discriminating between truth and error. He will fall a prey to deception. If I come here telling you something, you are not compelled to believe it. Amen. Amen. You are not what? Compelled to believe it. In Acts chapter 17, verse 11, he says, The people of Berea were more noble than the people of what? Thessalonica. For they searched the Bible daily. To see if those things the apostles were telling them were so. If I give quotation, write and go and read, maybe they were explained that the nobody says. Not just anybody. 
Let God be your guide. Amen. Amen. Deception and delusion can only be avoided by those who humbly study God's word and love the truth. You don't have time to study the Bible. You will have time to be deceived. If you study the Bible and you don't know what it says, you will know what Satan says. Then I want you to join this. God or Satan. And so Jesus said in John 8, 31, 32, that if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free from all deception. Hallelujah. Amen. And in John 4, 23, 24, he says, the time is coming and now has come that those who worship God through worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Not only in spirit, because you can be deceived. Not only in truth, because you need the transforming power of the spirit. Hallelujah. There are two kinds of Christians today. There are those who are seriously serving God in error. And there are those who have the truth, but they have no zeal. I see it. They know the truth, but there is no zeal, there is no power that manifests in their life. Others who are so committed, but they are committed and misled. Whether you are here or there, you are still in the trap of the devil. You must worship him in what? In truth and in spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you watching God in truth and in spirit? That is for reflection. Many are holding error today and still believing that it is truth. They are being deceived. Are you watching God according to his word? Or you are simply following the traditions of men? Oh, you are moving to an AA. And then I'm going to at the power of God, you stand there as one, an individual. I have left where my parents are, and I have found a place for myself. Though they were not happy, they said it is told me that is their business. You see, God owes you. Your parents only have a privilege of becoming co owners but they can't claim authority over you. So as you grow, you must make a decision for what? yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus told the Pharisee, who was so absorbed in traditions, what did he tell them? In vain, they worship me, teaching our doctrines the commandments of men. Yes, so many of you. Assume this is what? Well. Vain, useless, waste. But I want to challenge you. If only you will be open minded and you will keenly follow the presentation for this week, I promise you, God will open your understanding to value. Amen. And then you will have the privilege to choose for yourself. Whether to believe in the truth or to continue in error. When you choose to continue in the truth, then you are honest. But if you continue in the truth, you are mistaken. Now, you are honestly mistaken. The only way you can tell what I mean, because we need to pray. But when the truth is given to you, if you accept it, you will be honest. If you reject it, you remain what mistaken, but you can't be honest with mistaken again because now life has come and you have long darkness instead of light. Jesus invites you to spend this week at his face and he will guide you. He will instruct you the way you should go. And if you walk there, you will bring another disciple. Amen. And that as we send him, you just listen and write books. And go ahead and ask God. Jesus was 
question they were asking, where did you get the teaching from? And he told them in John 7, 17, if anyone wants to do his will, God's will, he will know of my teaching, whether it is from me or it is from God. If you are honestly looking for truth, the Spirit of God will guide you. Amen. Amen. Bow the Spirit. If you are willing to be part of this week's program of every day you want to come, just ask God to remove every hindrance from your way. Ask Him, Lord, I want to be part of all the presentations. Take away every hindrance from your way so that I can come and listen to you. Father, we thank you for the word. We plead with you as we make commitment to sit at your feet this week. Let our commitment to you this week be a turning point in our I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord, no tender voice like thine.